know, our fascination around here with the story of Jimmy Hoffa never really goes out of style, it seems. With the new film, The Irishman, the story is front and center nationally again. I hope you got a chance to see Steve Garagiola's documentary on Local 4 last week. If you didn't, head to clickondetroit.com to give it a look. And just as recommended, the podcast Steve has put together, and Steve Garagiola is here to talk about all things Hoffa. Steve, this has been fascinating because I'm going to assume that, like me, we've been around here a long time, you thought you knew the Jimmy Hoffa story. <laughs> well, you know, for me, quite the contrary. I knew about Hoffa what I think most people know. I thought, well, all right, I've been here a while. We've done all these FBI digs. So I know he was a labor leader. I know he had some kind of mob connections. Right. I know he made enemies with some bad people <laughs> because they made him go away. Right. And uh, I guess that's all I need to know. And then we started looking. And you know, I keep describing it as this rabbit hole. Yes. You go down the hole and all these tunnels go to New York, to Johnny Dio, to New Orleans, to Santo Traficante and Carlos Marcella, to the Kennedy assassination, to Nixon. It runs all over the place. He had his hand in so many things that I had no idea. So it's been such an education and so much fun, so interesting. It, absolutely. And the other thing that really, see, this is why I said earlier, but it's really hard to make fiction this good. As, oh, as absolutely. Good as what's real. Because the characters he was surrounded by, these are all right out of Elmore Leonard. we got guys named Three Fingers and the Weasel. And Frankie Three of... Fingers Coppola, <laughs> Marvin the Weasel Elkin, who was his driver. And, we, you know, we just stumbled upon these people as we went along. We were about three months into the project when came across Marvin Elkin. He said, all right, anybody named Marvin the Weasel, <laughs> we got to find out more about this guy. And we found him up in Toronto, and it turns out he was Hoffa's driver for five years. And the stories he shared about the guys who were in the back seat every day with Hoffa and how he wished every day there was a glass partition there so he, <laughs> he couldn't hear know. what he was yes. hearing. <laughs> Just amazing stories. And you and I were also, it's hard to imagine how you complimentarily get the nickname The Weasel. The Weasel. There must be something more charitable there than we can figure out. Um, the, Ken the Kennedy portion of this is a part that I absolutely had no clue, the, the rancor that existed between both Bobby and John Kennedy and Jimmy Hoffa. Well, yeah, I had no idea at all. You know, Pierre Salinger, who was an aide to John Kennedy as president, he's the one who coined the phrase uh, blood feud, yeah. that the Kennedys and, more Bobby Kennedy, but the Kennedys and Hoffa hated each other. This was not political, this was actual visceral personal hatred for each other. On his part, on Hoffa's part, it was because they came so hard at him. Bobby Kennedy, and he, he explained it as such, made a life mission of putting Jimmy Hoffa in prison. The Get Hoffa squad that he set up as attorney general yeah. was to put Jimmy Hoffa in prison. Hoffa, allegedly, never proven, but allegedly contacted a guy named Ed Parton down in New Orleans to blow up Bobby Kennedy's home with his family in it. And Ed Parton Holy said smokes. he wouldn't do it. Yeah. So yeah, it was more than rancor. Yeah. It was visceral hatred between these two. The, the bordered almost on homicide, as we see there. Well, and yeah. it may have, because well, though they, yes, because ultimately, Hoffa's alleged fingerprints are on the Kennedy assassination. Once it was concluded in 1979 that it was indeed a conspiracy, a conspiracy, then, subsequent to that, evidence starts to point at Carlos Marcello and Santo Traficante, and a mob hit. No great conspiracy involving the CIA and, and Castro and Cubans. Cuba, right. A mob hit that Jimmy Hoffa may have had a hand in. And all of these things you find as you start digging around a little bit. So it, it, here, we, here we go down, here the, we rabbit go down the rabbit hole <laughs> yeah. again. Yeah. Um, there's so much attention about the movie right now and uh, the, the Irishman. There's, there's, there's a number of things there that I, I, are, are inaccurate. In fact, one of the people you talked to kind of got in Robert De Niro's face about how wrong the movie was. Well, Dan Moldea is the guy you're referring to. Dan wrote a book called uh, Hoffa Wars. He is really considered the godfather of the Hoffa investigations. He was there from day one. One. Using and the term Godfather advisedly. It, yeah, here. well, yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> but he is just one of the investigators we talked to that said that the whole premise of the movie, this Frank Sheeran, is baloney. Yeah. It's just nonsense. Number one, La Cosa Nostra, the mob, would not have invited this outsider into a, a, a plot, into a plot like this, because it's a very closed culture, La Cosa Nostra, whether it's Detroit, Chicago, or New York. Number two, Frank Sheeran, if you know about how it got to where, where it was with his story, he wrote a book 
The shorthand version is he wrote a book about life in the mob, nobody was interested. Yeah, he wrote a couple other revisions of this book and it suddenly dawned on him, oh, now I remember, I killed Jimmy Hoffa. <laughs> so that was in his third edition of the book and then bam, New York Times bestseller, yeah. a movie. So nobody who's a credible investigator believes, believes Frank Sheeran part of the did th this. Story. But okay, it's, it's, well, the, in the minute it's we, good cinema. In the minute we have left, as you know, the eye, our eyes roll in the newsroom because every uh, six weeks somebody says, oh, they've got a new tip on what happened to Jimmy Hoffa and where he is. Were you able to arrive at a conclusion that you feel like you can live with? <laughs> no. We didn't, we didn't find Jimmy Hoffa, I can tell you that much. Uh, he, he could have been his body incinerated. He could be under the Pulaski Skyway in New Jersey. He could be under the Renaissance Center or in Milford or in Oakland Township or any number of other places. We no, Probably we not know. the corner of the end zone at Giant Stadium. Which we, we know he's we, not we there. We know he's not there. But that's the uh, only one we know. I highly recommend uh, Steve's podcast. It's going to be about six parts or yes. so. Uh, it's uh, part of uh, the fourth season of what we call the Shattered Podcast uh, here at Local 4. Uh, you can find it uh, available at all of the places where you find your own podcast. Just search Hoffa. Uh, the fine, terrific work from Steve Garagiola. Congratulations on all this. I know you've really enjoyed doing it. I have loved it. Thanks so much for being here, Steve. Thank you for being here as well. Uh, meet the Press coming up next right after Mitch Albums, Heart of Detroit. Have a great week. We'll see you next time right here at Flashpoint.